Welcome to the Library Love Fest podcast. I'm Virginia Stanley. I'm Lainey Mays. And I'm Grace Caranolo. We are the library marketing team at HarperCollins Publishers. We bring librarians and great books together. The new year brings new offerings from our podcast. The first episode of the month will have book presentations, author interviews, voicemails from librarians like you, and more. And our mini episode halfway through the month features our library reads winners. Don't miss our winning authors acceptance speeches. Enjoy the show. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Check it out. Do, 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 do. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Brought to you by Library Love Fest. Hi, everybody. It's Lainey. And Virginia. We're here for our Library Reads episode of the podcast. This is our mini episode halfway through the month where we tell you about our titles on the Library Reads list. And we're very excited to uh, keep doing that because we keep having books on the list. Yay! Always a good feeling when we get that email from the yeah. Library Reads <laughs> people. So for everybody out there, I hope there's not many of you that don't know about Library Reads. It's uh, a monthly list of books that are voted on by people who work in libraries. So not just people who are librarians, but anybody who works in a library can vote for uh, their favorite books that are coming out in the next month. So um, this is uh, this is our, our March list, the March Library Reads list. People had to vote by February 1st. That's all they've got to do. And um, and then next thing you know, your votes are counted, your voices are heard. And I think that this is a really useful tool, you know, for librarians and, and patrons because it's um, it's a cool thing. You know, you go to the bookstores and you see shelf talkers. Well, these are shelf talkers, but in the in the form of votes by librarians on books that they are super jazzed about. So always, um, you know, we, we have a lot of fun with this, but it's really it's only 10 books on this list so to be one of those 10 for all the books that are published um for this month is really an honor and um and then there's the hall of fame authors if an author has made the list more than twice they they're no longer eligible for the list because they want to keep that list fresh and you know give people a chance give other authors a chance to make that list but there's a hall of fame list so so those authors still benefit um from the votes and the love from librarians So we don't have any on the list of one of the top 10, but we do have a Hall of Famer. Lainey, who do we have? Yeah, we have Peter Swanson for The Kind Worth Saving. Yay! Love him. Yeah, really, really excited. Um, Peter is a big champion of libraries. And every, the past few times, I feel like, the, one of the first times we did this podcast, we called Peter, and I think that was his first Hall of Fame selection. And we joked about getting him some kind of like members only jacket or something, but he was just so excited. <laughs> and <laughs> he continues to make the Hall of Fame list and, you know, so excitedly sends us an audio. So we have an audio from Peter Swanson. Hi, this is Peter Swanson, author of The Kind Worth Saving. I'm here to say how honored I am that my new book has been chosen for the Library Reads list and that I'm in the Hall of Fame. I'm especially pleased that The Kind Worth Saving was chosen because this new book sees the return of one of my favorite characters, the librarian Lily Kintner. The Kind Worth Saving is my first sequel. I'm calling it a semi-sequel only because it doesn't really hinge on the plot of its predecessor, The Kind Worth Killing, but it includes two characters from that book. It's really why I wrote it. I wanted to return to Henry Kimball, but most importantly to Lily Kintner, one of my favorite characters that I've ever written. When we first met Lily in The Kind Worth Killing, when she was 14 years old, she was already a voracious reader, someone very happy to immerse herself in the world of books. She is also, it turns out, a bit of a sociopath and a very good murderer. And when she's older, she becomes an archival librarian. Not connecting being a murderer with being a librarian, but Lily is a very special type of murderer. 
She's not driven by the urge to kill. She simply doesn't mind doing it. And I like to think that she's a very unique character. That's why it was so much fun returning to her in my latest book. I didn't specifically write it to appeal to librarians, but in some ways I'm always imagining librarians as my ideal readers. It was the library and my weekly visits there as a small child that opened up the world of reading to me. And the world of reading, of course, gave me the world of writing. Again, I'm honored to be chosen for Library Reads, honored to be in the Hall of Fame, and looking forward to the kind worth saving showing up on library shelves. Happy reading, everyone. That, I have to say, I teared up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> the librarians being a ideal reader, that was really sweet. Oh my God, that's a great, that's a great audio clip. We should put that everywhere. That's amazing. And he's such a great writer. And what a what a lovely man, too. I'm so sad we didn't get him that members only jacket. I mean <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure he wouldn't want to wear it, but it, it's really funny. Um I yeah. he said he may want he may wear it. You think he may so? go to the library with the jacket <laughs> on. Maybe use it for a little thread, I don't know, but it would be <laughs> very cute. Maybe so. Maybe so. Um, well, that's that's pretty wonderful. And he's he's done a bunch for libraries. He's gone to lots of libraries and lots of conferences, and he's just such a huge supporter. The man is very authentic. Um, so then we got another lovely surprise. Um, in addition to the top 10 and the Hall of Fame, a new initiative for Library Reads is a bonus pick. And that's when one of the um, Library Reads board members chooses a title that they personally loved, which came close to making the list. And so the book that was chosen for this month for the bonus pick is a book by Connie Briscoe called You Never Know. And we were so excited to see that on there because she's, you know, she's come back to Harper after after years away. Her first book was with Harper. And um, this book is so cool. Um, it's a uh, it's a suspense. It's domestic suspense. Um, and it it's um, the ca the main character is hearing impaired and she has a cochlear implant as does the author herself connie briscoe got hers years and years ago but it factors into the book not not in a heavy-handed way but enough that it makes um you you know that it's there but it's a on its own such a such a page turner so so suspenseful so incredibly um weird and um like a like a, a a relationship gone sour um and it's just it's it's a page turner from the get-go from page one you you're seeing the aftermath of this um nasty nasty episode of um abuse and it goes from there then it's a retelling goes backwards it's terrific so you never know by connie briscoe really excited that that one was selected by a board member for the bonus yeah. pick. Yeah, and I want to point out that our last episode, the big main episode of the month, Virginia, you interviewed Connie, and it was fantastic. So you can hear from Connie herself talk about the book, and um, wow, it was a great one. I, I really encourage everyone to go back and listen. Thanks. I really love talking to her. I was here when she did her, when we published her first book. It was, you know, many moons ago. So it was, it was nice to to catch up with her and to and to talk about this book, which I really encourage everybody to to read. She's just lovely. What a what a wonderful what a wonderful writer and a wonderful person. Connie was so excited to learn the news that she had been her book had been selected as the bonus pick, and so she just wanted to thank all the librarians who voted and hope that this uh, spreads the word and um, that more people will read this book. You never know because it's really wonderful. Yeah. Well, I think that's the end of our exciting Library Reads news, but we're doing this new thing where we ask a question every month, which we'll get into what next month's question is in just a second. But we have a couple of voicemails that came in answering our February question. It came in after we posted our episode, so I thought we would do a couple here because it's still the month of love and it's all about romance tropes. So I have a couple of voicemails. You want to hear some? 
I do. What was the question? The question was, what is your favorite romance trope? So people called in to our voicemail, 212-207-7773, and <laughs> left us a voicemail saying what the favorite romance trope was. And I think we have like three or four um, that we can share. So here's the first one. Well, hello, Library Love Fest. This is Elizabeth Olesh from the Baldwin Public Library. And my favorite romance trope is the life list. You know, when someone has that list of everything that they are looking for in a romantic partner. And of course, that special someone comes along and they don't fit the bill at all. For example, I would send you to Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Have a great day and keep on reading. I love that. Nice. All righty, here's another one. Hello, library and best friends. This is Kelly Moore, Carrollton Public Library in Texas. I was calling to answer your question about romance tropes. I have a couple of favorites. One is the slow burn friends and lovers. I always enjoy that one and seeing how the relationship um, unfolds. And uh, the opposite as well, the enemies to lovers, um, to see the interplay of the um, usually snappy dialogue um, between two people that don't like each other and then kind of watch them um, slowly fall in love. That's it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> I, I don't know. These just make me so happy. And it's still Valentine's Day week for us when this episode's coming out. So it's a good way to stay in the spirit. <laughs> it is. And it makes me think of books that uh, also makes me think of, I don't know, when she just said enemies to lovers, I was thinking about that show Moonlighting with Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepard, which they weren't really enemies, but they, they drove each other nuts, but they loved each other. It was such a great show. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> All right, one more. Okay. Hi, this is Maureen Roberts from the Baltimore County Public Library, and my absolute favorite romance trope is fake dating. Such an opportunity for shenanigans and hijinks. And that's why I'm really looking forward to Alexandria Belfler's next novel, The Fiancé Farce, where she ramps it up a notch with a fake engagement. Thanks. That's some nice plugging for some shenanigans by <laughs> Alexandria <laughs> Belfler. Love, Maureen. Yeah. That's so great. I love that. That's a cool, that's a cool recording. Thank you to all the librarians who, who, who called in because, again, just makes me so happy. It's so nice to hear your voice and not just read an email mm. from you, you know. Um, so sure. thank you. Virginia, do you want to tell them what next month's question, March's question is? So that episode will come out the 1st of March, and I'm, you can call in now. I'm glad you asked, Lainey, because the question for the month of March and start calling now is, what is the what is the funniest or wackiest thing that ever happened in your library? Go. Start. <laughs> dialing dialing nobody dials anymore um yeah i mean I'm, i i'm sure that they the stories are far and wide um and so whatever pops into your head that you think you'd like to share with everyone else let us know it's uh it's a fun little thing it's it's and as laney said it's so great to hear from everybody it's great to hear voices it's one one step closer to being face to face one day <laughs> yeah i know that one will be juicy I'm ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the end of our episode. So be sure to share this podcast with a friend. And if you, you know, were featured on the voicemail, share that with your social followers and call in for next month's question. And we will see you March 1st for our larger episode with an author interview. Yay. All right, everyone. So nice to connect. Lainey, lovely to chat with you. You too. Uh, until next time. Bye, y'all. Thank you for listening to the Library Love Fest podcast. For more information, go to librarylovefest.com. Enjoying the show? We would love to hear what you think. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Library Love Fest, on Instagram and TikTok at Harper Library. And you can always give us a call and leave us a message. You might end up on the show. That number is 212-207-7773. Be sure to rate and review us and share the show with a friend. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.